I think of Natalie Cole, I have to go back in my mind and just reminisce on moments where I was playing um, her first album. I was so excited. She had that pose and that beautiful flower in her hair and inseparable. And I was wearing it out. I would be playing it over and over again, singing at the top of my lungs, had my brush going on in the mirror and knock at the door. Girl, it'd be my mom. If you don't turn it down, she'd go away and I'd turn it right on back up. <laughs> turn it up again. Well, but the memories will never go away, you know, and I can never say that she was not a good time, a good friend, <laughs> you know, and my rider died, and I was her rider died, and that's just all it was for Benita and Natalie. We feel her presence every day, so with that, we talk about her every, every day. day. Like, her presence is so strong, like, it feels like she's in the room, so, like, she's in conversation. Every, Every day. day. Like literally. Wow, what a beauty synonymous with grace and power and just such a vocal stylist. I mean, just amazing. Um, um, within those years, there was so much music, so many charts, so many songs, such a learning experience to be on the road with her. She was a workaholic. She worked very hard and she was a stickler for notes. She had perfect pitch, I believe, because she could sing a note and she'd go, hey, who's singing that note, you know? So um, it was like very, very cool to um, really be able to work with her. I'm very grateful even to this day uh, that I had the opportunity. Sky Mommy was a perfectionist, and but she was just she had an ear. She had, like, like I don't know a lot of people. That. No. She, she could hear one. I'm like, how did she hear that? Yes. Scott Mommy was, if it ain't right, we, we ain't, ain't doing, doing it. it. I remember just reading the credits. And then um, by the time she got to her, I think her third record or so, it was the record with I Got Love On My Mind. My my favorite one when I was little was I've Got Love On My Mind because mm -hmm. of the instrumentation. Like it's just, it just sounds great live. It really I does. On my mind. I've got love. On my mind. I've got love. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so like, mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. And she was very particular. Very particular. We performed with her at the Hollywood Bowl. She was no joke. But that is... It, it shaped us. It did shape us. Um, unpredictable. It was... I was ready. I was ready for I Got Love on My Mind for my fifth grade talent show. Ooh, yes. And I sang that song. I got a standing ovation. And this little girl talking about she got love on her mind. What she know about love? <laughs> but it was just such a life-changing uh, experience for me. It's like that was the defining moment for me that I knew that I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to sing my heart out to the world. And um, Natalie Cole was a very uh, big part of uh, that journey for me. I loved working with Natalie. I miss her terribly. Um, my favorite song that she would ask, who want, you know, what song do you guys want to do tonight, was uh, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which was one of the harder songs, but we loved it and we did it. And every time I get in my car, I, you know, I just hear This Will Be, which was my other, our ending song, which was so fabulous. And so yeah, it was a wonderful experience. One of my favorite things to watch of her, like just on the road, is she would do this thing. So before she would actually go out on the stage, when it's showtime, <laughs> she will be behind the curtain before it's time for her to walk out. Her mic will be ready. Then she'll just start singing as part of the song and the audience is going crazy because it's like, it's time. it's time. I always thought that was so cool how she did that. Like she would literally be in behind the curtains like, <laughs> and like everybody in the audience is going ready. nuts. We, you know, we had ups and downs and she used to get on my nerves at times and I got on hers. <laughs> One of the times I was telling her, I was like, 
oh girl i guess i'll keep you you know i said you get on my last nerve and she's like feisty versa you know <laughs> okay you know so uh but it was okay you know because it's like I don't care what kind of relationship you have with anybody, you're not going to get along 100% of the time. You know, when you're somebody is into you, they know you, they appreciate you, they love you, was so such so reciprocated between the two of us that you can't really just look at um, something negative, you know, before you remember something positive. Well, another fun thing we did was when I first started, we had... Um, <laughs> costume changes and it was like oh my god you know I, all these beautiful outfits that were just for us and we would change in between you know we do two or three songs and we run back and change and um, I just thought it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me it, it it gave me a lot in my life and it helped me in my journey of just in the music industry let's not forget now let her, let's, let's not let her name you know, just fade away. You know, Natalie Maria Cole, you know, she uh, contributed great um, gifts to this world, to society, to people. You know, um, her heart was the kind of heart that gave, you know, wasn't a selfish woman. And she did so many things and she deserves to be remembered, you know, to re be remembered for who she was, for her talent and her contribution. God Mommy was royalty right. and she deserves all the respect and all the praise i'm she's not unsung to me no. like not even close god mommy got you know a lot of accolades, accolades. <laughs> you know having two platinum albums in one year in one year you know having nine grammys okay mm -hmm. that and and not even just grammys like different renowned awards mm -hmm. you know she was she was everything love her icon queen forever Let's see. Uh, so anyway, uh, I guess if anything, it's become more competitive. There are a lot of women out there who um, they all they all feel like they have something to offer. Um, I think that um, the women that are successful are basically the ones that are very aggressive. Um, they're very distinctive, and they're writing more of their own material, which I need to be doing more of. Thank you very much. But I must say that I've been one of the lucky ones that, that am able to um, interpret other people's music very well. So in other words, other writers, you know, I'm able to do that. But I think that, you know, that it's pretty... Um, it's very jammed. It's jammed out there. There's women coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> and um, you really have to have something very, very special these days because there's like clones. And so it's nice to be able to be, you know, unique. Um, Anita Baker did um, one of your songs, Urge to Merge, um, in her show. She did? Yeah. <laughs> She told me she was going to do that. Yeah, she she did nice tell, yeah, we were talking about it. She told me that she was going to do it. And she said, and she said, but I, I really want to be able to do it like you do it, but because we use a lot of electric electronics. And she says, we don't have that. You know, she was getting all say, Anita and I are, are, are friends. Yeah. But I, I didn't know she had actually put it in the show. And yeah, she, she told me she was going to. She did a good job. That's great. That's great. Eddie. Anita put Urge to Merge in the show. Yeah. Yeah. Baker came here about a year ago. She remember she was telling me she wanted to do that. She was telling me she put yeah. Yeah, she, she she said it sounded good. It's great. Yeah, she's 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 good at that. Anita and Anita and I relate very well musically because we like a lot of the same kind of stuff and she's able to take outside material and interpret it in her own way and that's that's really one of the ways that I became the um, the success that I started to have even as a um, when I was like still in college and I was singing because because I didn't have any songs of my own I would take 
the top 40 charts and re rearrange them. Like Rock Steady. Yeah. And, um, and I think that that's kind of a little, it's not a secret, but I think that that's a, it's, it's a key to letting people know that you are creative. And that like you, what you do with Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Exactly. I love that. Exactly. Or even taking When I Fall in Love and just redoing it. You know, I think the worst thing you can do is do a cover of a song and do it the same way. That, that is not, it's not really flattering. It's, it's flattering initially that you would want to do this song, but if you're not going to do anything different to it, it, it like, seems to me it's kind of a waste. Okay. So, but Anita does that very well. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Anita. Okay. Um, how has your style changed since you? Uh... I think it's just expanding constantly. I can't stick with one thing. I never could. <laughs> really? I know it makes people crazy, but I just can't help it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, what kind of letters or feedback do you get from fans? They really love you um, out there, and I just wondered what you know. If, do you get letters or calls? Or... Yeah, I got I got letters, beautiful letters. Um, you know, people who really just have either followed me for many years or are just becoming fans and they're all so positive and they all just feel like I'm such a beautiful person and you know you kind of go God am I worthy of all of this stuff you know and it's, it's really it's really nice especially those who have been with me for a long time you know they've they were there when I first got there they were there when I had my 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 fall and then I you know rise again and and they, you know, write and say, you know, I'm still with you because I believe in you. And I mean, that's like, um, it's, it's great. It's, it's really nice. <laughs> okay, um, throughout the years, your albums, um, the themes and the titles sort of reflect um, what was going on in your life at the moment, um, like um, thankful and inseparable. And uh, what does everlasting mean um, at this point? Ooh. Well, <laughs> when we, when we, when we, um, named the album Everlasting, I, I always kind of cringed at first because I thought, oh, it's a little pretentious, you know, it's not really to imply that I think I'm everlasting, but I guess it is, there is a spiritual implication that goodness is everlasting, and this album was uh, the result of a lot of hard work, um, and really, it was what a lot of people call the comeback album, and so I think that that and it's that kind of makes everlasting. It's like um, you can't keep a good man down. You know that 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 God is good and He's good in my life, and that His mercy is everlasting, and and that's the way that as the the title starts, um, you know, as people start saying, "Oh yeah, the name of the album is everlasting," and I was saying to myself, "What does that really mean?" And I think that it really is more spiritual, even though it just so happens that that is the title of the, of the song. You know, so it just it just worked. Cause it's I didn't, yeah, I didn't really want to call it that because I thought, oh, people might think, you know, I'm trying to be, you know. <laughs> but it just turns out that it it's very meaningful. Okay. Okay. Um, love seems to be a dominant theme in your music. Um, yeah. Have you found anybody special since uh, Marvin? I know you were real close. Close. But not like him. Uh, Marvin was, he's an individual who just had such an, an incredible impact on my life and on the life of my child, you know. And it's going to be hard replacing someone like that. Okay. Okay, um... How do you cope with being an entertainer and a single mom? Um, I've seen pictures of Robbie and he's really handsome. He's yeah, really thank you. Yeah. Um, well, sometimes, not very well sometimes. <laughs> I do okay, but it's hard, you know, and especially since he doesn't have a father. I have to be like both. And, you know, he's, he's really a very um, unique child and his situation is unique and he's learned how to live in a unique situation. So he's a survivor. He's independent, not by choice, but because he has to be. And um, and yet we're very close. And we look at our times together as very special. And um, you know, I think he's going to be okay. I worry, you know, about the psychological ramifications, but. Uh, I, if I had my brothers, I would rather that he had, that I have a, another half, 
<laughs> to help me, you know, because it's not easy. It's really not. Oh, they're, they're not going to. Um, does he still play the drums? Oh yeah, he's taking really? lessons now. He's gotten really good. Really? Yeah. Oh, you're gonna put him in your show someday? Eventually, because we went and saw Dion Warwick and her son was playing, and he was about 15 at the time. And my my son saw that, and not forget it. You know, <laughs> I never heard the end of it. You know, he's 11. He's 11. Now. So I'm sure that it won't be too long before he's up there. Oh. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did you bring him with you this time? Not this time. No. Uh, we'll be spending Thanksgiving. Uh, I would have. If we had been on our way to Japan, we're supposed to be going to Japan after this, but um, there were some political events going on over there, and so we had to cancel. To so. Yeah, but uh, I use I t try to take him with me, you know, as much as I can without taking him without having to miss too much school. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Do you have any um, goals? I mean, I know you have goals, but um, which. Have you started work on your next album, or yeah. You find yeah, we're working on that, and um, it's it's funny because when we worked on the Everlasting album, and I was just kind of you know getting my feet wet again, and, and we had a hard time finding the material, you know, we had a hard time hooking up with the right type of producers, and. This time we got songs coming out of our ears, you know, and <laughs> it's it's very ironic. And now I'm kind of wrestling with like four, 15 songs instead of just 10, and it's it's a little more difficult in a way just picking the material with because we've got so much to choose from. Whereas before we had to like, you know. Do we have enough? But uh, it'll be the album will be out in April, and um, yeah. yeah, I I'm really I really wanted to be something special, you know. I I, I just you know the, the two-edged sword of success is that once you become successful, once you put something good out there. The question is, can you do it again? And I hope the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you plan, there's been so much happening in your life. Um, do you plan to write a book or an autobiography? Well, um, I'm waiting for a few more things to happen. <laughs> you know, um, I think when you write a book and the kind of story that I have to tell, I don't really want to have like a press conference, you know, about it because, you know, it's just going to be one book, one time, and I just don't know if I'm really ready to reveal all that stuff just yet, you know, but um, eventually I think that I would be very open to writing a book. Yeah. Okay, okay, um, last question. Um, you grew up in... Um Hancock Park, right? Um, right. Was it difficult for you um, as a black person around, you know, so many, you know, wealthy white families? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Well, you know, when you're in that type of a situation, um, you don't really realize it until you get into it. Like, I grew up in like a bubble, really, you know, and um, the way I lived, I thought everybody lived that way. And I didn't find out that everybody didn't live that way until I went away to college. And I chose to go away to college. I didn't choose to stay home and go to college. And it just so happens that the school I chose to go to was UMass, which was just starting to accept black students. So we were in the, I was, I was, uh, used to being in the minority, you know, but I didn't really look at it as a black-white thing until I got to UMass. So I was like 18 before I really was hit with the um, impact of being black. And <laughs> my experience in college was uh, very interesting because it really changed my outlook on who I was. And, and, what being black was all about, and black awareness, and all that stuff, and I had to grow up all over again. But when I came home for spring break after and for my freshman year, I was I looked entirely different. I had an afro. I was talking different. I was thinking very different. And my mother, she didn't know what had happened. You know? <laughs> what had happened to her little baby? You know. But I grew up very fast, and I'm very grateful for the experience that I had there because I would never. I think I was ended up being more comfortable 
with the people that I met after I left home than had I stayed home. You know, and I, I see a big difference too because um, my sisters, who also went back east to college, but they went to um, uh, they well, what one went to Amherst, and she was one of the first women on campus, let alone black. And then... Um, the twin sisters? Yeah, and then that was Timlin. And then Casey went to Brown University, which at the time so they didn't have a lot of black, you know. But then they also went 10 years after me, so it was a different thing happening with black students and white students. And the whole, you know, setting was entirely different. So they... They don't know. They didn't experience any of that, okay? <laughs> but... Um, I'm really glad for it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Too. Yeah. Uh, but I'm really glad that it, that uh, I had that experience, and it made me start asking questions. And I'm glad about that too. Okay. okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say that you'd like the public to know, mm. or people in Hawaii to know? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Natalie. Okay. I've loved her music and I constantly listen to her music because she had brought new energy to me. She had helped to bring me to new stages in my career as a singer. And I know a lot, including myself, a lot of people are missing her because the music industry hasn't been the same. It's been tough, but the music industry hasn't been the same. I will take and sum up Natalie in one of her own songs and to say that she's truly unforgettable. Someone who music has passed the test of times. Her music is timeless. Her music would never fade away. Her music would always be, as she is, unforgettable. <laughs> 